What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to diagnose the issues that I've been having with the Turbo GMC Sierra. Um, I talked to Kyle from Goat Rope Garage. He kind of pointed me in the right direction. I think I was um, concentrating too much on tuning issues and not thinking mechanical. Um, he told me to look uh, at the log and uh, log all the misfires, but uh, log misfires, but for individual cylinders. So you're able to log your total misfires with HP tuners, as well as individual misfires for each cylinder. So you know which one is starting to have issues and things like that. So I went out, turned the boost controller on to the, you know, the eight pound setting and uh, made a pull. So I'm going to slide this over and you guys will be able to watch which cylinder starts misfiring. So that's not just a couple misfires. We're talking 120 misfires on cylinder eight only. So seeing that points me to the direction of cylinder eight. If it was all the cylinders across the board misfiring, I would think it'd be something in the tune, maybe um, something adding timing or taking timing or fueling way off, something along those lines. But being that it's only cylinder eight, uh, I'm gonna concentrate all my efforts there. Um, so I'm gonna go out, I'm going to pull the plug wire, inspect that closely, make sure it's not cracked or torn and the boots are not split or anything weird. Um, I don't really know how to test an LS coil. I'm sure you could probably ohms across them or something like that, but I'm, um, I'll save that for later. If, if the plug wire looks good, I'm gonna pull the plug out, take a look at that, and we will uh, see what we see and try to correct it today and go, go make a couple more pulls and, and get this tune dialed in. So I showed you the logs and it says cylinder eight is misfiring, only cylinder eight. Um, so what I did is uh, I just attacked cylinder eight. I didn't really worry about doing compression tests and things like that. Um, and typically when you have a misfire in one cylinder, when you bump the boost, it's either because your coil is going bad and it can't keep up with the extra cylinder pressures, um, your plug wire is going bad, and it can't keep up the extra cylinder pressures. When you have more cylinder pressure, more energy to deliver that spark. If it can't do it, sometimes the spark will jump out of the wire, especially since I'm running just factory cheapo wires. Um, but what I did find, start looking at it, you know, jump back there. Um, I was able to get cylinder eight out real easy because you guys could see the hole there. Um, you know, I didn't have my inner fender well in still hitting on the frame there yes i know i know what my plan is on this is to um, give this a cut like cut kind of a circle or oval out of it then flip it like invert that slide it back into place then weld it back in so it'll actually just give it a nice dent um or i might just redneck it and heat it up with the oxygen acetylene torch and uh beat it with a hammer that's always an option but look at this. So the car runs, idles, drives fine, but under high boost pressure. When I say high, I'm talking like eight pounds of boost. Kind of, kind of feel it around like seven. Look at that. See that crack there? Crack in the spark plug. So what happens when it tries to deliver that spark through the tip of the plug, can't do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and regap this or not regap this one. I always keep a few plugs on hand, which was nice. I got another BR7EF NGK plug. I'm going to regap this um, to. I'll have to look back in the in the book, but I think I was going to 25 thousandths on it. Um, so I will do that and stick that in. Then I'll take it for another drive. And uh, I'll log it the same, log those misfires like I showed you, and uh, see if those go away, or at least if it helps. And if, I'm pretty sure that's going to eliminate it, but if it doesn't, then we'll just start looking deeper into it. So, it pulled, uh, pulled good. We'll have to look at the log. Um, very, very, very rich, but you know, we got a log there, so we'll see um, 
I'm sorry, the AC is probably blasting. So we'll have to see how that um, how that pole looked on the log. It did feel a bit flat, um, but it was making the boost. I pulled through a shift um, and it peaked at 10.2, but I think during the pull is more like eight. So I'll have to look back at the log, see you know how much boost we actually had there um, and how much timing. I'm looking over at the log and just kind of where the, I know I had a bunch of timing pull out because so I was worried about that misfire. So that might've been only about um, eight degrees timing and the AFRs, well, I'm tuning a Lambda. I looked over on and saw 0.68, which is, I forget what that is in AFR, but it's deep into the tens. So very, very rich. So I'll make a quick adjustment. Um, yeah, it looks like we're, from what I see, I got a little marker line on my log, um, about eight, eight pounds of boost, eight and a half pounds of boost. So um, I'll make an adjustment and do another pull and see if it, it feels good. It pulled good. It just felt like it didn't have much power. So I didn't feel any uh, missing or stumbling or anything like that. So here was the first pull. Um, see here, anything over 100 kPa is into boost. This is around um, high eight, low nine PSI. Um, but what mainly what we're looking at here is our misfires. I see number two. I'm sitting here idling as well. Cylinder two. See that 12. Then as I get into the run, you can see cylinder two throws a few misfires in there in the mix of that. Boom. So I did a few pulls. We'll see if cylinder two is constantly a issue. Um, I might want to look at that plug as well, make sure everything is, uh, there's cylinder eight. And these are very, very minor, might not be a, be a problem. It's just a couple. Last time cylinder eight was showing like 190. So. See, there's a couple, six and four. I don't know. Still very conservative timing. Um, I do have it adding. Or is it? Let's see, it's adding two degrees of timing for when the methanol kicks. You can see it was a 0.72 lambda. So what I did because the AFRs were pretty good with the methanol turned off. I actually just turned my finish um, injection. It was on 10, now we're at about 13. So I think that will add a little less uh, boost up top. So instead of changing the AFRs, or not the AFRs, but the actual injector fueling, I'm gonna add less methanol. Um, that way if the methanol ever fails, it runs out, a nozzle gets plugged, anything like that, the engine isn't relying on the methanol to run good and safe. It will be uh, safe on just pump gas, but better with methanol. It'll add timing and that kind of stuff, but it'll still be a safe AFR if the methanol fails. So um, I'm going to uh, maybe add a little bit of timing up top. I don't know, because I am revving this thing out with a stock cam to 6,000. Um, so maybe I'm pulling too, too far into the gears and, um, it's got stock springs and everything. So maybe, uh, it's also having a problem with valve float. So I have to look into that. I don't want to rev it any higher than I need to, but if it pulls good up top, I'm going to lower it down to, uh, um, I probably turn the boost controller off and make another pull. So that's only like three pounds of boost. If it feels good all the way out to 6,000 and it doesn't feel like it drops off, um, then I'm going to assume that I'm probably getting valve float. And I'll probably just shift this, uh, turn the shift points down to around 5,500. 
um, instead of 6,000 to try to, because I feel like it's it's after about 5,500 it starts uh, dropping off pretty, I feel it pretty drastically uh, and just in the seat of the pants. So um, I'll look at that and uh, I'll update you guys on that, but it seems like the misfires are gone for the most part. Um, maybe just a little bit of tuning things. Um, and I think it's uh, it's ready to go out to the track and Sierra needs to take this thing down the quarter mile or maybe eighth mile. She's never drag raced anything in her life. So um, the great thing is, you know, we have the different boost settings so she could get used to it. And also we'll be launching in four high. So she won't have to deal with wheel spin or anything like that. Um, but, and also at my track, since this truck is gonna be not extremely fast, um, I'll actually be able to ride shotgun with her until she gets into the 13s. Um, so I don't know if it will hit a 13 with the boost controller off, but I'd think on like nine or 10 pounds, it could even hit like a high 12. Um, that, that could be a little, little overzealous. Maybe, maybe like a mid to low 13. Um, yeah, remember it's got the stock cam. It's completely stock, just adding boost. So uh, maybe that's a little high. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching the video and sticking with me through this and you guys that uh, commented and saw the video and reached out to me personally and, and um, you know, helped me along the way. Kyle from Goat Rope Garage, he's the one that actually said, check the plug, maybe you have a bad plug, coil, wire. So I kind of, um, I thought it was a tuning thing just because I was so caught up in the tuning. So I appreciate that, Kyle. Thank you for all the help. Um, if you guys like this video, please show me a little love. Hit that like button. Please subscribe to the video as well, uh, or to the channel. Um, the more subscribers, more likes and stuff we get, the, the more I'm um, wanting to do more videos and things like that. I'm gonna try to keep the, the content to um, at least once or twice a week. Um, you know, but if I start getting more, more action, I'll try to make more videos for you guys. Anyways, I appreciate it, thank you.